Hey guys, it is Sunday, September 12th, and this is your update. So to make up for the sort of blandness of last week's vlog, I have a very special topic today. Jane Austen. Ah uh, yes, Jane Austen, that most controversial of women. But why? What has made her an object of either scorn or adulation? That's what we're going to talk about this week. And yes, I totally watch Pride and Prejudice, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Leaving politics aside for a moment, originally it was just a good story and a social commentary about young people in love and the ridiculousness of high society in England in 1813. Not so much wrong with that. And if anything, it was originally refreshingly non cliche Mr. Darcy wasn't a Bronte sort of hero. He wasn't just sitting in a corner being dark and angsty. And the two female leads, Jane and Elizabeth, were really just people. They weren't focused on being girly girls. They certainly weren't boy crazy. And the female characters that were, namely Kitty, Lydia, and Mrs. Bennet, were not portrayed in a good light. You were supposed to admire these girls for being so independently minded and, you know, real people. And then somewhere in the 2000s, something went wrong. I'd like to say I could blame the Kara Knightley version, which I had to watch in my AP English class in high school, and it sucks, and if you try to say it doesn't, you're wrong. But really, that version was only writing a crest of Jane Austen's fanaticism that was well underway by that point. Something exploded, particularly for Pride and Prejudice. Suddenly there were a million fan novels out there with a million really, really questionable premises. From what I've seen, they pretty much all focus on the Darcys before marriage, after marriage, some sort of combination thereof, I don't know. And really weird combinations with Pride and Prejudice. Some sort of intrigue and adventure and swashbuckling and, I don't know, corset-busting harlequin romances. I don't get it. And there have been a million different interpretations of Pride and Prejudice. Films, plays, even a musical, which I have yet to check out, but I am really tempted, I have to admit. There was even a wishbone interpretation, which has more nostalgia value than actual value. Ah, oh, Wishbone. Everyone who watched you as a kid loved you. But man, these costumes. Wishbone seemed a lot cooler when I was a kid, but I do still love it, and I would totally buy it on DVD if they had it out. Oh, but Joe's ball cut. Uh, maybe I had some kind of subconscious thing going on. By far and away the best version, though, was the BBC one, done in the mid-90s. Oh my god, it was awesome. Six parts, this thing showed on TV constantly because it was so popular. And it's no wonder why, because it really is the best interpretation out there. It has basically every single line from the book. And I mean that. There was only two scenes that really weren't there, and I would have cut them too. Though I have to admit a secret desire to really geek out and see what would happen if Sir Percy Blakeney from the Scarlet Pimpernel ever met Mr. Darcy, I can just sort of see it going something like this. Well, you know, my BFF is the Prince Regent, and I'm the richest man in England. What now? Only, you know, a lot more witty and classy than what I just said. It's also become this thing where if you like Pride and Prejudice in your mail, you're somehow gay or something. I don't really get that. My dad adores the BBC interpretation, and he was a frickin' Marine. In fact, I remember he was picking me up from PLU once, saw my RA in the lounge, saw her watching the BBC version and could pick out what episode they were on. He loves it a lot. And now we get to back to Jane Austen exploding all over culture. Not only are quotes from her books everywhere, but just her. She's everywhere. There's movies about liking her. I don't get it. Why, America? Why? Yes, it was good, but you're turning it into this Twilight Saga that almost makes it unlikable. I was never big on fan novels to begin with. I mean, you're not connected to the author in any way. You have no means of really, truly understanding their original purpose. What the hell business do you have writing their novels for them? I've been told they have the potential to be good. White Star Gas OC is supposed to be a really good book. But then again, I was never so much in love with Jane Eyre that I really felt like I needed to spend my Saturday really delving into the psyche of Bertha. I don't even remember if that was the girl's name. Was that her name? I don't know. I read it in high school. It wasn't that good. With the exception of maybe Todd McCaffrey, who was clearly groomed by his mother and to take over the Dragon Riders of Hearn franchise, I just don't think that anyone has any business writing fanfiction and then getting it published for money. Or maybe I'm just jealous, 
I don't know. But the culture has become so saturated in Pride and Prejudice and Jane Austen that now we have the backlash, like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Don't want to keep hearing about Elizabeth and Miss Darcy? Okay, well here's a scene of her kicking Lady Catherine in the mouth. Have fun with that because she's a zombie. I mean, I wasn't going to go for that anyway. Zombies are one of my personal terrors, but no! So here's the real point, guys. There shouldn't be this dramatic battle between love and hate. Pride and Prejudice was just a story. And you know what? It was a pretty okay story. Yes, I'm going to say it. I like the book, and I really like the BBC adaptation. I just wish you guys would sort of leave off the drama. And I also want to say there is nothing wrong with liking Pride and Prejudice. There is something wrong with going so far off the deep end that that is all you focus on and you also totally misinterpret the story and its intentions and somehow turn Darcy and Elizabeth into the hot, raving sex couple of the century. I don't know why you're doing that. But you also shouldn't be hating. It was a pretty good book. Jane Austen wasn't that bad. Just saying. So really, don't turn it into Twilight. Don't make it bigger than it has to be. Just cool down, guys. So there's your rant for the week. Other news. I went into Manhattan yesterday, saw Hannah, helped my roommate with a bunch of bank nonsense. I didn't actually get all that much done, and I didn't get a chance to take any pictures, but hopefully soon. Other than that, not all that much has been happening. I've had a lot of time off class. I've just sort of been kicking my heels against the wall. I've done some homework. And I'm putting off my big project for the week, which I really have to do today. And that is a three-page paper on the human penis. Yeah. I also have to include what I think my favorite penis size is, or the perfect penis size. I don't know. I'm going to say that there is no perfect size, but some people really like that answer, and other people get really pissed off, so uh, include your thoughts in the comments below if you really want to or email me. Most of you email me. So that's pretty much it. It's my mom's birthday on Wednesday. Everyone say happy birthday to mom. Happy birthday, mom. I won't tell them how old you are because I love you. Mom would kill me if I told you how old she was. Other than that, not much to report. This is going to take a lot of editing, so I'm going to say goodbye now so I have time to finish it up and write that three-page paper. Yay. Anyway, I hope you're all having a great week, and I hope you enjoyed this a little bit more than last week. I'll see you next week. Mwah. According to the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, penis is the male organ of copulation and in mammals ordinary excretion. When one lists the male genitalia